love this podcast, head to patreon.com slash DATC Media Company to find out how you can show your support. DATC Media is very excited to be a Nugs.net official affiliate. Never miss the show. Nugs.net allows you to stream live concert audio and video in their app anytime, anywhere. Listen to last night's show with premium sound quality and official soundboard recordings. Watch a stacked archive of past live performances from countless artists and access future subscriber exclusive live streams. Easily keep track of your tour highlights with shareable playlists and more. Take a scroll through and you'll quickly see why Nugs.net is my favorite app. Link in show notes to start your seven-day free trial. Nugs.net, where live music lives. Those shows are always the fire shows. Those are always the ones where you find treasure. Those are always the shows that I think you should be looking for the Hall of Fames before New Year's or before Red Rocks. or And no diss to any of those runs by any means at all. I mean, shit, I have so many highlights from, from those runs on there. But of course those runs are going to produce highlights. Everybody's jazzed up about those runs. Everybody comes into town. And so the energy is just, you know, another level of places like Red Rocks or, or wherever they're playing New Year's or something or a birthday show or of course, of course. But when you're talking about a random Wednesday night in Arkansas and that show had six songs that found a spot on my 2023 highlights list, yeah, do not dismiss the random Wednesday night shows, especially in a Wednesday night in Arkansas, the night before 420, yeah. A member of the DATC media family. Greetings, fellow music enthusiasts. Welcome to Dropped Among This Crowd podcast. This is your space to explore the role of music in our lives, our love for it, and the sense of community that it creates. Each episode of the show will feature a diverse selection of topics and insightful conversations revolving around three core themes, music, community, and Umphreys McGee. I'm your host, Sarah J, and I'm thrilled to have you along for the ride. Are you prepared for what comes next? everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this week of Dropped Among This Crowd. I'm your host, Sarah J. I hope that you were able to check out last week's episode where I chatted with frontman for the Jake Derringer Project, Frank Derringer. Check that out if you haven't. And in case you missed it, Jake Derringer Project played the after party this past Friday, if you're listening to this when it airs, after night one of Umphreys at First Ave, I did post the set list on the show's Instagram and Facebook pages, so check that out. Give a follow if you're not. Very nice set, 12 songs and a three-song encore, which is just incredible considering the fact that Jake had just played two sets with Umphreys. They took on three Umphreys originals, Thin Air, which they played last year in Madison, Frank talks about in our conversation. They also played August and Got Your Milk. Yes, there is content from the night coming video, and audio, so stay tuned for that. And if you are a part of a band that is needing some help with shows, promo, ticketing, day of stuff, all the tedious BS stuff that needs to be done, 
to make a show happen that most musicians do not want to deal with, reach out and let's talk some more. I would love to help you guys and work with you. I'm really good at all of those things and it helps take all of that off your mind as well and keeps your focus on putting on a fucking killer show. So if that's something that you or your band is interested, feel free to reach out. I would love to help make your gigs a success. You could shoot me an email at sarah at datcmediacompany.com. This week on the show, we're going to get into my class of 2023 Hall of Fame votes. And this does not get any easier year after year. In fact, it actually gets harder to choose. And I think the only reason it started to perhaps seem easier is because I've become much better about putting the ones that I know for sure will be getting my vote on a separate playlist right after I listen to them. I've been doing that the past two, maybe three years, but definitely the past two years when I am already listening to these shows. If there's a song that I'm just like, there's no doubt that this is going to get voted for Hall of Fame. I put it on a separate playlist. And actually, when I went to vote for this year, I went to that playlist and I already had eight songs on there. So it made the voting process very easy, made the voting process easier, I should say. And so that's a, a tip for anyone that feels overwhelmed year after year with trying to sift through all of the incredible moments from the year that we're trying to vote for. Try that with 2024. We're early enough in the year that you can uh, (laughs) try that out and see how that works for you. But I will admit, I, like I said, I still had two spaces to fill. And even after all these years of voting, I still found myself getting my votes in under the wire. I just got my votes in Sunday night, Monday night. (laughs) And the voting ends this week. If you're listening to this when it airs, it ends on Friday. So I do it too. I wait till the last minute. Actually, this is the earliest I think I've gotten my votes in. Usually it's like the night before or the day of because I just over, over analyze it. And the only 10 spots thing does not help (laughs) the anxiety, but I'm excited to get into what I uh, voted for in 2023. But before we get to all of that, Perhaps you noticed the new intro and outro music here on the show. That is courtesy of Power Trio Mosey Beats. Those guys wrote, recorded two brand new tracks for me, for the show. And I just absolutely love both of them. So a big, huge thank you, shout out, much obliged, all the things to Taylor, Blair, and Thomas. I just love those guys. They have been such a supporter of the show since the very beginning. They were on the show back during COVID time with their bassist then, and they have been on the show again recently, episode 224, with their new bassist, Thomas. And yeah, just awesome collaborations with those guys over the last couple years. Taylor is a huge supporter and spokesperson person for Rough Gage, and he's made some awesome promotional videos um, for them. So it's been really awesome to work with him in that capacity as well. And yeah, I just love those guys. And I love 
just their energy and their vibe and their sound and everything that they're about. Actually, they just had their set from March 9th at the Sherman Theater drop over on YouTube. So definitely give that a listen. I'll throw a link also in the show notes. And also in the show notes, you can find their website where they'll have all of their tour dates and everything that's going on. And they are also on Instagram, Facebook. So give them a follow. Those guys are awesome. And keep your eyes peeled for what is coming next with them. So can you believe it? Umble 10 is just on the horizon. It's next week. It's insane for me to believe that it's almost time, even though it was rescheduled and everything, it's still unbelievable that it's so soon, that it's next week. I could go on a whole thing about how time has been recently, and I know that I'm not the only one that feels that way. I've had many, many friends echo sentiments about how time is just moving right now, Um, and that's a whole rabbit hole. If you know me, you know that's a whole rabbit hole I can go down, but anyway, on Bowl 10, there is all sorts of coverage coming next week from DATC Media and the podcast leading up to the big event, of course. Next week, two episodes of the podcast dropping Tuesday and Thursday, as well as all sorts of posts and look back on social media. So make sure you're following the show on Facebook and Instagram. Also coming Next week, an announcement about the coverage that's going to be coming from DATC Media over the two nights in Boston. Very excited about that as well. And new this year, sponsorship opportunities. DATC is offering sponsorship options, a really fun way to get your brand or your music, your whatever, (laughs) out to the masses. Check out datcmediacompany.com slash sponsor. There are two options there. There is an option if you just want to offer your general support. And then there is a second option if you are a small business or a band, a musician, or something along those lines, and you would like to explore the option of a bigger sponsorship for uh, for you and how we can maximize what DATC Media is doing over the Humble 10 weekend, bring more eyes onto some awesome products and awesome music and bands in this community. So yeah, check it out, datcmediacompany.com slash sponsor. And if you can't make it to Umbo Live, nugs.net is bringing both nights to you free for subscribers. And the two nights before in Vermont are also being streamed. So all four of those nights for free if you're a subscriber. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not, I don't know how many times I can say this, I suggest you get on that. Link in the show notes to get a seven-day free trial, and I can pretty much promise that you're going to keep that subscription. It's my one of my most used apps, and as someone posts or comments, nugs.net, come for the free streams, stay for the insane catalog of live music. And that's true. Like, it's pretty ridiculous what they have on there. Not not only all of the Umphrey shows, but a shit ton of other music. It's nuts. I use it way more than even Spotify. Like, seriously. Anyway, 
Quick recent show announcement from the band, June 13th at Red Butte Garden in Salt Lake City, Utah with Daniel Donato's Cosmic Country. Tickets are on sale May 2nd at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. I will say that it actually threw me for a loop when I read that and saw that the ticket date was kind of far It's not, but it is in comparison to a lot of times when they are making show announcements and they're like, oh, we announced the show today and the tickets are on sale right now. You're like, oh my God. So (laughs) it was kind of nice to see that there was a little bit of a, a buffer time there for folks to get some tickets. All right, so let's get into this week's episode, Hall of Fame, Class of 2023. And before we dive headfirst into that, Hall of Fame 2022 is now available anywhere you stream music. If you're interested, episode 241 gets into my votes for Hall of Fame 2022. Seven of my 10 votes made the final track listing, so that made me happy. Yes, including that Mantis Draconian Mantis from the Fillmore in Detroit that I have been talking about being on Hall of Fame since the second it ended. Legitimately. The second that song ended, the second the last note was played, I looked around and was just like, this is going to be on Hall of Fame. In fact, during that mantis I was just like we are in the depths of a hall of fame moment right now like I just knew it there was no doubt as it was happening so I'm so so happy that everybody felt the exact same way about that and it it, there's no way you just can't not so if you've never listened to that mantis draconian mantis do yourself a favor and listen to that today. In fact, pause this episode, go listen to that and come back and finish this because I just absolutely love that segment of music. It's just, uh, it's so, so, so good. So yeah, if you haven't listened to that, listen to it, listen to it again. Actually, I think I'm probably going to listen to it today. Now that we're talking about it again, (laughs) there was a point in time where I legitimately talked about that Every day. It came up every day last year in some way. It was pretty funny. It got to be pretty comical the ways that it would come up and I would talk about it if you go back and listen to those episodes. Um, So yeah, Mantis Draconia Mantis. Ah, so good. Anyway, on to Hall of Fame 2023. Voting is just about closed. Like I said, you have until April 20th to get those votes in. That's this Friday, if you're listening to this when it airs. So if you haven't gotten your votes in, maybe this episode will help you finalize those ballots. There is also a link in the show notes for a playlist containing all of my 2023 highlights, as well as a playlist containing just my votes. Both of those are brought to you by nugs.net. I want to give a shout out to Jimmy Knowledge, co-host of the Umphreys Wow Show. Dive into that show if you haven't. Anyway, over on Twitter or X or whatever it's called. I don't know. Whatever. You'll find Jimmy under the Nachos for All and UM Wow Show handle. He recently shared his 2023 votes and went into even nerdier detail about each of his choices in only the way that Jimmy Knowledge can. While answering his own question, what if each ballot choice was an MLB Hall of Famer? And if that wasn't awesome and creative enough, he includes the timestamp titled quote unquote, my happy place in his tweet about each 
boat. I fucking love it. And I love Jimmy so much. He's just an awesome, awesome dude. If you're a longtime listener, you know he's been a guest here multiple, multiple times here on the show. We did humble conversations. We've done all sorts of conversations. Like I said, the Umphreys Wow Show. Check that out anywhere you podcast. That's Jimmy Knowledge and Rob Turner, and they just dissect the shit out of um, Umphreys tunes and then does a metal brown, gold, silver, bronze. Just an awesome, awesome show. So definitely check that out if you haven't. I will link the thread from Twitter, whatever, in the show notes. I think that I can do that. Um, But if you're on that platform, check it out. It's worth uh, a, a moment to dive into. I just love the way that Jimmy gets into all of the things. And it's really funny that he does those types of things because whenever I try to describe Jimmy to someone that doesn't know him, I use that analogy. I'm like, do you know, like, there's always that guy. There's the sports guy who knows the stats about this player and this team and the last time this happened and whatever. And they're like, yeah, that's Jimmy, but for Umphreys. And so when he does things like that, it just absolutely proves my point that that is Jimmy through and through and just an amazing, amazing human. So Definitely check out that thread. Like I said, I'm going to try to see if I can link it. And if I can't, but you're over there on Twitter or whatever, definitely give um, Wow Show and Nachos for All a follow. So much awesome content coming from Jimmy. All right, so let's get into my votes. First up, Hurt Birdbath, January 15th at Wind Creek Event Center. Resolution, February 2nd at the Sylvie. Got Your Milk right here, April 19th at JJ's Live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. That show is fucking fire. And I don't think it gets talked about enough. One of those hidden gems because it was a random Wednesday night. And those are precisely the ones that you need to be looking at first, in my honest opinion. And I didn't go back and listen to the recap episode where I talked about this show, but I'm pretty sure that I made that same comment about that random Wednesday show or if they play like a random Tuesday somewhere. Those shows are always the fire shows. Those are always the ones where you find treasure. Those are always the shows that I think you should be looking for the Hall of Fames before New Year's or before Red Rocks. And no diss to any of those runs by any means at all. I mean, shit, I have so many highlights from from those runs on there. But of course those runs are going to produce highlights. Everybody's jazzed up about those runs. Everybody comes into town. And so the energy is just, you know, another level of places like Red Rocks or wherever they're playing New Year's or something or a birthday show or of course, of course. But when you're talking about a random Wednesday night in Arkansas and that show had six songs that found a spot on my 2023 highlights list, yeah, do not dismiss the random Wednesday night shows, especially in a Wednesday night in Arkansas, the night before 420, yeah. Do yourself a favor and give that show a listen. Next up, Escape Goat, April 29th at Johnny Mercer Theater. Syncopated Strangers, April 28th, Greenfield Lake Amphitheater. Believe the Lie, June 29th, Buffalo, New York. And not to sound biased at all, because I'm sure many of you know that I live in Buffalo, New York, but they have a history of throwing it the fuck down here. It's just just truth. And this show had several songs that found a spot on my highlights list, 
including, of course, this Believe the Lie, which I cannot stop talking about this Believe the Lie. Also, the booth love, the wallet's worth was massive. Night Nurse, Draconian, and Utopian Fur. Those are some fucking heavy hitters. And it's not a tendous bias at all. I 100% asked other people, and was like, please listen to these and tell me it's not just the fact that they were playing 20 minutes from my house and I just moved into my new apartment and got my car and there were all these other things in my life and, you know, it was all the other stuff. And the consensus, everybody I asked says, no, those are all bangers for sure. So the Believe the Lie from June 29th, the town ballroom in Buffalo, New York, got the vote on my ballot. But those other songs from that show definitely deserve a listen. And quite honestly, just that whole show. Next up, Draconian, September 14th, The Depot in Salt Lake City, Utah. That would feature Mike Greenfield from Lotus on drums. Check out my chat with him after that show on episode 236. And I just go on and on and on about how much I love this version. And this is actually the only tune on my Hall of Fame ballot that features one of the sit-in drummers while Chris was gone. Ah, oh, that Draconian is so nasty. And I've seen it on so many other people's uh, ballots. I, I'm very confident that that one is going to be on there. Also, Believe the Lie. I'm very confident that that is going to make it through as well. Plunger, July 2nd from Frederick Meyer Garden. Wide Open, April 14th. House of Blues in Orlando, Florida. Actually, the last time that tune was played. And that Ross Stu song debuted during Umble 9 on night two, has only been played four times, counting this one here that we're talking about. Take that one for a spin. Really, 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 really. And this is me formally asking the band to please play this again, like soon, because we just really need more of that. That right there is, that is Umphreys. Wide open. That song is just, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, on my ballot, the silent type from January 14th at the Fillmore in Philadelphia, PA. And like I said, it's so difficult to only pick 10. I say this every year. It's like choosing a favorite child. And I will say that I'm very happy to see on the voting page that now it says you don't have to pick. Like last year it was Draconian, Mantis Draconian. This year it actually says on there, you know, Team UM gets the gist if you want to do a Segway sandwich. You only have to put the first song in. Team UM gets the gets the intention. So it's nice that that's on there now because like in the case of last year where it was the whole sandwich, it was taking up it was taking up real estate that we could have used for other songs. So I'm glad to see that that is on the top of the ballot now. So anyways, I do want to throw out some honorable mentions. First of all, I have to start by bringing up Pork Chop Pie being played for the first time in almost 10 years on September 8th at Mishawaka Amphitheater in Bellevue, Colorado, and with Jake on drums. This ABT original only played six times total, total, including this one here, last time played December 20th, 2013. 
And while that might not necessarily be a highlight that I would vote for on a Hall of Fame ballot, I certainly think that we needed to uh, bring that up. Certainly worth mentioning. And also worth mentioning Stew on This with Rob Turner and Carl Engelman, a show that the two of them did last year here on DATC Media Network. Check that out. They did two seasons of that, and there's all sorts of fun nuggets and conversations on there. Bayless was on the show. Jake was on the show. ABT drummer Steve Crojo was on the show. Stasic was on the show. Daniel Donato was on the show. I forgot to mention that earlier when I mentioned the show that Daniel Donato is going to be playing with the guys this summer. Carl and Rob talked to him on stew on this. And so thinking of pork chop pie and ABT reminded me of that. So definitely check out stew on this a fun, fun show with Rob Turner and Carl Engelman. All right, back to my honorable mentions. Always October, January 26th, Clyde Theater. The first time that we, the first time that we really saw it have the confidence to expand prior the longest version coming in at five minutes this one would double in length coming in with a time stamp of 11 11 next full frontal august 27th at the signal in chattanooga tennessee with andy on drums 229 show gap last time played prior december 27th 2019 That was also only the 12th time that it's been played. DeJunk, June 2nd from Frederick Meyer Garden. There are actually quite a few songs from that show as well on my highlights list. Gravity's Real, February 25th, Brooklyn Bowl, Las Vegas. Only the fourth time this tune has been played ever And prior to this one, the last time it had been played was back in 2016 on August 11th, Bayless's birthday at Higher Ground in Burlington, Vermont, sandwiched in All in Time. This version is sandwiched in a hurt birdbath, and I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. If you're going to listen to this, you have to start at the beginning of the story with Hurt Birdbath. Cut off February 3rd, first Ave. This tune has only seen 21 plays total. This was the last time we saw it. Prior was November 20th, 2021. Also deserving a dust off. Fun, random fact, a version of this tune that I really, really enjoy October 18th, 2018 at the Canopy Club in Urbana, Illinois. That's just a fucking fire show anyway. That's another one that you need to listen to if you've never listened to it. So add it to the list. I hope you're making a list of the things that uh, (laughs) you need to listen to after this episode. Draconian, February 4th, 1st Ave. This I also had on my final list but it got pushed out by the Greenfield version. And I wouldn't want to vote for two versions of the same song anyway. No judgment if you did do that. Just personally, I just wanted to give that spot to another song because it is prime real estate. If you've been listening to this show for any length of time, you know that I just love Draconian anyway. It just always hits me in in all the feels and it never disappoints honestly we could go on a whole long debate about what is their best song written I just said you know wide open is Umphreys okay but Draconian is just an absolutely amazing and beautifully written song that we have this whole journey this whole adventure before we even get to the lyrics of the song and again those lyrics. I say it every every single time. So it's not a surprise if you know me to see Draconian here again on my honorable mentions list. I just absolutely love that song. And 
Adam Scheinberg made a joke before. It could have been here on the show or maybe something else that we had worked on together. But that if Draconian is on the set list, we know that Sarah is going to love it. So the fact that they played one in Buffalo 2 when I was here and that was on my highlights list, I just absolutely love, love, love that song. But like I said, the other one was on my list. This was on my list. And just something about that Greenfield version is what pushed it over, but this one had to come on over to the honorable mentions. Staircase, July 2nd from Frederick Meyer Garden. And let's talk about Staircase for just a second. I went back and forth on this, especially when I voted for the also new tune, Wide Open. I personally couldn't bring myself to vote for Staircase for Hall of Fame this year. And it's not a diss to the song at all. It's not a diss to anybody who has. I know that it's on Jimmy Knowledge's ballad. And when I was going through and figuring out what I wanted to put in those last two ballot spots, there are a ton of highlights on my list from the year. There's a lot of versions of Staircase. It has become a hell of a song in just a short amount of time. It debuted on March 5th of 2023. So it debuted in this year that we're voting for. So for me, that was part of the reason too. Even though last year, Unevolved was on the Hall of Fame and it had been born in that same year. So there are a lot of different, you know, parts to this discussion, of course. It has been played 22 times at the time of this episode's recording. So in 2023 and 2024. So in a little over a year of its life, which is more times than that wide open that I voted for. So it has had a chance to, I guess, I don't want to say prove itself, but it has had ample time to show what it is capable of in its infancy. It has shown great confidence in a short amount of time. It has shown that it's melding in with the family very, very well. But I just personally don't think that it's time yet. But the version from July 2nd, I believe, deserves a mention and a listen. Uh, Two other ones that I can think of off the top of my head. August 22nd, Chattanooga. August 24th. There's a bunch of them on my list. Like I said, if you're really interested in going through my full 2023 highlights list, I will link it in the show notes and take a scroll through there. You will definitely find it on there a bunch of times. Like I said, it's been incredible to watch that song morph and grow so quickly. But I also want to give it time and keep an eye on it to see if that momentum continues in 2024. I believe it's been the case so far. I do have a few shows that I need to catch up on in 2024. I do believe that is the case, but I want to keep an eye on that and see what it is going to do this rest of the year before it finds a place on my ballot. I would not at all be surprised to see a version from 2023 on the final Hall of Fame tracking list at all. I would not at all be surprised to see it. Um, But again, that's just my personal reasons why Staircase didn't move over to my my final ballad. Is there a possibility that we're sitting here next year talking about 2024 and I'm talking about Staircase on my ballot? Absolute possibility. But for me personally, this year, that's why I left Staircase off my final ballot. And finally, a few last 
honorable mentions. Red Tape from February 2nd at the Sylvie in Madison, Wisconsin. Spires, March 2nd at Midtown Ballroom in Bend, Oregon. That one turns into a fucking dance party. Oh, so much fun. And finally, but certainly not least, because there were so, so many incredible moments from 2023, this conversation could go on for hours and hours and hours. And trust me, I I would do it. I would sit here and and do it. And maybe I will on the Patreon. I don't know. We'll see how wordy I uh, feel later on. Like I mentioned, there's a link in the show notes for the 238 track 2023 highlights playlist if you're interested. I have a few other playlists that are weekend specific from 2023 and a few saved that I know Joel made and he shared them on Twitter that were also weekend specific. So I will throw links in the show notes for all of those as well. So there's a ton of highlights. If you don't see it on my massive 2023 highlights list, I do a summer camp highlights list. I do a New Year's Eve highlights list. And then Joel did one. So there's other highlights all over the place. Um, And yeah, I mean, we could talk about the whole summer camp highlights with Mo. I mean, there's just so much, so much. But anyways, the final one to make my honorable mentions list, Rocker, part two, January 13th at 930 Club in Washington, D.C. And a bonus, a bonus, if you've not listened to this one, you really need to. I know I've said that about several, (laughs) several shows and songs in this episode, but add this one to your list. April 13th, Janice Live in St. Petersburg, Florida. Another show that you will find many highlights from on my 2023 master list. But the segment from that evening that I want to talk about specifically, DBK into release into DBK. Release cover of the Pearl Jam song. Like I said, just listen to that if you haven't. And if you have, I'm sure you haven't listened to it recently enough that you definitely should listen to that again. Be prepared to just feel all of the feels because it's absolutely amazing. And Bayless's voice is just I'm trying not to get emotional just talking about it right now. So, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. Please be sure to leave a review of the show. It would mean so much to me, and it helps get this podcast into the ears of even more fellow music fans. If you're not already following the show on social media, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Dropped Among This Crowd Podcast or check out DATCMediaCompany.com for more. Thank you again. I'll see you around these parts real soon. Mad love. <laughs>